Graham would left the band, oh, you know, then he'd written all them songs at Spencer's, as we say in England, of a gum tree. Right? So what am I going to do now? You know, I mean, if Steve Winwood left my band, I would, I would probably quit. That would be it. You know, <laughs> but Spencer got all these, you know, hit records, and so he called me because we, I was friends with Steve and him and everybody, right? And he said, do you want to, you know, do a drawing? I went. So I looked at the size of my shoes and went, I don't think they're going to fit. Right? <laughs> I was too, it was too iconic for me. And not only that, he was my best mate. So he called me up, are you going to do it? I said, Steve, would you leave me alone? And then there was a bunch of different groups that were all reforming. Because Cream had broken up. We lost Jimmy Hendrix, right, which was... That, that confused everybody in the first place. When he, when he turned up in England, I knew it would confuse everybody. But <laughs> and, uh, you know, all those three-piece power sections had disappeared. So Jimmy Page, who, who was up to, I think, what was it? The Yardbirds number 233, I think. Or 15 or 18, something like that. And uh, so I'm with the same management, Peter Grant and uh, Mickey Mouse. And... Uh, Yes, yes, no laughing in the wings here, really. Uh, you, oh, you were there too, were you? Oh, see, yeah, he understands. And uh, so, uh, I go up the office one day, right, and uh, Peter Grant says, Jimmy wants to talk to you. I said, oh, really? And we just planned going on tour with another Rolling Stones tour, right? And he said, he's putting a band together. And I said, well, what's he gonna call it? He said, well, if you, Peter Grant talks like this, well, if he calls it the Yardbirds, I want nothing to do with him anymore. <laughs> he said, because every time I hear the word Yardbirds, I have a, a nervous breakdown because of all the times, you know. I said, really? So who's he got in the band? He said, well, nobody. I went, oh, it's a big band, though. Yeah. So he said, well, he's talking about John Paul Jones, who we were in the studio with Donovan, and he was Donovan's place. I said, now, well, what kind of band is this? Like the Incredible String Band? <laughs> Where are we going here? It's a folky band or something? Oh, no, no, it's a, you know, it's a heavy rock band, he said. Anyway, he wants you to sing. I went, well, okay, give me the... So I talked to Jim, and he said, uh, so get over here and we'll put the band together. I said, well, that's all you've got? He goes, oh, no, wait, we'll put it together. I went, okay, well... I said, well, I've just got to go out with the Stones on, on about 40 gigs in America, right? In 16, you know, on that big tour. I'll do the gigs, I'll come back, and we'll give it a shot. Oh, no, you've got to do it now. I went, oh, no, no, now, this week, or well, forget it. I went, oh, well, it's all right. So I had a few more gigs to do in England before we went, came to, went. We're here, aren't we? All right, that's right. So before we came to America and do this enormous tour, and one of the gigs was up in a place called Bolton, up in the north. And I'll never forget it really, but it was this other band on, and I had this incredible PA system, an Accuset. You remember Accuset, the Swedish one? The Who had them, and all like, only thing you could hear them with, right? So we had this great PA system, and the band before me, they had a Wham PA system, which, no, they're not around anymore, they're not. No. And, uh, which were not very good. <laughs> I mean, you know, but you're, it's what you could afford. So theirs blew up. And so I, this guy's singing, and I couldn't quite hear what he was doing, so I give him the mic, and I get to run the PA, you know, for what? Paid all that money for it, you know. So I'm running the PA, and I start listening to him singing, and the drummer was on. Unbelievable, and I went, you know what? A penny dropped. I went, this is exactly what Jimmy should do, you know. Well, anyway, needless to say, that's the story. And, and so I turned Jimmy onto him, and that became Led Zeppelin. That was it. Right? I said, you got to get the drummer, though. Not just, he said, what does the singer look like? I went, well, he looks a damn sight better than you do. <laughs> yeah. He, he was a big guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They reinforced the whole floor in that office. He's but, a lovely guy, Pete. But, you know, um, <laughs> your vocals, oh, everybody, you know, has, has always, you know, been amazed by how you could sing and what you could do and the range. Yeah, it's very humbling, you know, it's very humbling at the time. I, I, you, when you're doing it like that every day, as you know, Seema, we just do what we do. 
and you don't really get into well who's better than who. These are all buddies of yours. Uh, I must admit they all still are. Steve Wimard, right? And we miss Steve Marriott and a couple of people, you know. But you know they were they're all buddies. So you don't really compete. There's nothing in that, you know. They don't go nowhere. Okay, if you use your 